Hello, Mark Scott of HurricaneTrack.com here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for Thursday, August 31st, 2017. I want to start things off looking in the eastern Pacific. We do have Tropical Storm Lydia right off the Baja Peninsula here, and winds are 50 miles per hour, pressure down to 994. There's a chance this could make it to hurricane intensity before making landfall here along the Baja. Not much of a chance left, but it's certainly there. That's just a technical term, tropical storm, hurricane, that borderline between the two, 60, 70, 75 miles per hour really doesn't make that big of a difference overall. In this case, it's going to be the tremendous amount of rainfall that will be uh, impacting the region here uh, as it really tracks right over the Baja Peninsula, uh, which will cause it to weaken wind-wise, but there's going to be a lot of rainfall from this. And I guess there's a chance that some of that rain could make it up into parts of the Sonoran Desert. And that includes, of course, the southwest United States. So just keep this in mind. I did not want to ignore what's happening here in the eastern Pacific uh, because of how busy the Atlantic is. If we look at an infrared, uh, you can see it's fairly well developed. Uh, if this had more time over water, it would definitely become a hurricane. And again, here's the Baja Peninsula right here. And you can see all this deep convection associated with it, indicating strong upward motion in the atmosphere, and those reds and dark gray colors there dropping some tremendous rainfall. So this is going to be the primary hazard, and that will continue for the next several days. Like I said, unfortunately, we go and look at the track map, track map again. You see that this is going to pass right over the Baja, right up the spine, and that's going to be problematic in terms of the rainfall. All right, moving into the Atlantic Basin, we now have Hurricane Irma rapidly intensifying the 11 o'clock Eastern Time advisory package from the National Hurricane Center. Irma has 100 mile per hour winds. That makes it a Category 2, and the pressure is down to 979 millibars, and it's uh, got a very small eye. I'll show you that in just a minute. Uh, if we look at the track map over the next several days, uh, for the most part, west-northwest for the next, I don't know, day or two. And then, as strong high pressure builds in to the north and to the east of the system, you know, roughly like this, uh, not exactly the shape of it, but this is the idea. We certainly don't have a trough out there. That exerts enough force on this system, so to speak, as it expands. Remember, these areas are always changing their shape, their thickness in the atmosphere, and it's going to do so enough to kind of push Irma to the west-southwest. So imagine that you are walking along in a straight line and then a whole bunch of people come walking by and they just kind of push you and you have to go on a curved line and moves you from your straight path like a big crowd of people. Uh, you know, you're walking along the beachfront and a wave runs into you and it knocks you back towards the beach. You know, anything, any force that's going to act on you and move you off your straight line path. Uh, the wind could blow you, whatever. I'm just trying to paint the picture here to let you understand why. And out here in the tropics, these large areas of high pressure that are over the Atlantic, uh, they ebb and flow. They get bigger. They inflate and they deflate. That's a good way to look at it. And in this case, the high pressure out here is going to inflate more and uh, push Irma off to the west-southwest with time before it resumes a presumably resumes a westward track. So this means, obviously, that you folks here in the Lesser Antilles need to pay attention to this. I do not see in the global models that the high will be so strong to make Irma dive to the southwest as far south as the latitude of Barbados, for example, where you just had, not too long ago, the first part of Harvey as it came through as a tropical storm, uh, and cause flooding there. I don't see where Irma will get that far south. Uh, this right here is the 15 degree latitude line right here. See if I can draw a straight line. That's pretty good considering I don't have a mouse at the moment. And so Irma should stay hopefully north of there. So, you know, we're talking about areas like Guadalupe and maybe farther south from there. Uh, so I would think that if you're along the 15-degree latitude line here uh, up north towards 
you know, 20, between 15 and 20 is where this should track, you can see that puts a lot of those islands at risk. And we're going to talk about this more over the coming days. No reason to speculate exactly where something might happen right now. But obviously, if you are in this area, it is time to really start looking at your hurricane preparedness plans. And that would probably include Puerto Rico, in my opinion. Luck favors the prepared. And you should start looking at things now just to be ready in case Irma comes your way. Uh, the signs are starting to point to that that may indeed be the case. Looking at the infrared of the wide shot here of the Atlantic Basin, first of all, the remnants of Harvey over here still holding on strong. A very well-developed circulation is now just a depression. But you can see on the east side of it some uh, stronger rain bands still moving on shore across the Florida Panhandle and up into Alabama, and that's going to also work its way up into Georgia, believe it or not. So just keep that in mind, but at least, thank goodness, over here in Texas, almost into southwest Louisiana, the sunshine is out as the massive recovery process uh, really starts up in earnest now. Port Arthur, Beaumont, the greater Houston area, the surrounding areas are of Houston, all the way down to Corpus Christi and points north where you think about Rockport and those small towns around there that were impacted so heavily by Harvey and now we can start cleaning up. So good luck to the folks doing that and believe me, Texans really, really appreciate it. Trust me, I could see it on their faces when I was there just yesterday and the day before and days before that. They really appreciate it. So here's Irma, and it's. I wanted to show you this instead of the zoomed-in floater. Why? Because I want to show you something remarkable. Even at this wide shot, look right there at the last frame, right there. I'm going to put the little pointer next to it. Look at that little pinhole eye that pops up at the end. A very small central dense overcast. Um... That's just remarkable. We have not seen a long track hurricane. That's the Cabo Verde Islands. We used to refer to them as the Cape Verde Islands. And uh, this is going to be a long track hurricane coming in. It's going to end up somewhere in the southwest Atlantic, maybe over this way before all is said and done. Uh, I don't think there's any way around that. It's just in terms of where it ends up. I don't know, and nobody knows for sure. But if you are interested in seeing what a long track hurricane looks like and we can just hope it doesn't hit land but you know hope by itself is never a good planning tool but Irma is going to be something we have not seen in quite some time maybe going all the way back to 2008 when we had Ike form fairly far out to the east alright uh, so looking at the health of the systems that we have out there uh, Irma very well developed, no question about that. The vorticity signature, nice and round and bundled. And even over Louisiana here, the leftovers of Harvey still has a lot of vigor associated with it. It's not going to do this, but if Harvey were to move more east-northeast like this, I would think that it would absolutely regenerate into a hurricane out here. Uh, but it's not going to do that. It's going to move up and around the back side of this big old Bermuda High that's sitting out here and the track's going to be up like this and then it'll eventually just die away just to let you know but it has so much energy with it and just it's it's like it's I hate to use the word superstorm because that's not the like Sandy it's more like Superman you know like Man of Steel whatever this thing just won't die it's got so much life to it so to speak and we saw that as it came over uh, off the Yucatan and then of course as it got back out over the water off of the Texas coast it just marvels somebody like me who is into this more than just the I hate to use the word excitement because that just doesn't do it justice I like the science behind this I really do and I'm fascinated by what I see on the whole not just what hurricanes do and how they get everybody paying attention and all that stuff, the hype behind it. Um, it's the science. And this really shows, Harvey shows us uh, how much we still need to learn 
uh, because every one of these things in, is different. And Irma, same thing, going from tropical storm to a Category 2 hurricane in such a short amount of time. Let me move on. Sorry for the editorial and the commentary, but you know what? This is really, really important stuff. Tropical cyclones, the science behind them, uh, it should get everybody fired up, not just the hype and the uh, whatever happens when they hit land. So, very important to me. So anyway, back to the task at hand. This is a very important map that we are going to be looking at a lot over the next few days. Now, this is generated from NOAA's uh, AOML lab down in the Miami area, and uh, it shows the upper ocean heat content. And Irma, uh, I'm going to show you in a minute, is located out in here. And what this map shows us is the amount of upper ocean heat content. And the easiest way to just explain this, and it's pretty clear, that the higher up you go on the scale, in the colors of the rainbow there, the more energy is in the ocean. So that being said, let me show you what it looks like with Irma plotted on top. This map, by the way, is available in our app and on our subscription site. We make this one of our exclusive features, so just a little tip for you there. If you have our app on iPhone, go to the tracking section and this is where you'll find this map. Uh, so here is Irma, and this is really important. Let me zoom in a little bit here, if it'll let me. Come on, please let me. So here's Irma out here at Category 2 intensity over marginal upper ocean heat content. You know, the water is warm, especially at the surface, warmer than normal. But the upper ocean heat content, that means that warm water extends only a little bit down into the depths of the ocean. Look what happens farther to the west here. After about 72 hours, between then and day four, as Irma reaches the 50 degree longitude line, and from there, the upper ocean heat content, you can just extrapolate out, you know, that it's going to be somewhere in this area after that, presumably. It just gets higher. And I'm not trying to scare you. It's just the truth. All right? And this is a real problem for our friends here in the islands because the upper ocean heat content has a little, I guess you could call it an isotherm right here, where it goes up a level. See that right there? It goes from this sort of, I don't even know what color this is, but it goes to yellow, right? So it's increasing. And it may not seem like much, but every quarter to half a degree Celsius that the water temperature increases provides just insane amounts of extra energy. I don't know the physics and the computations behind it. I honestly don't. But I know what I see when I see these things pass over such high ocean heat content, and it's just going to get higher from there. So that leads me to, to believe this is going to be stronger than even what the Hurricane Center is, is showing. It's possible. I'm not saying they're wrong. I'm saying that hurricane intensity is where there is the least amount of skill. And if we didn't learn that from Harvey, we never will. All right? So please, please, if you're in the islands, you need to be getting your thoughts in order in terms of what you're going to do. Looking at the track guidance, just to kind of explain uh, the Hurricane Center's reasoning here. On the one hand, I like it when I see everything clustered like a bundle of wires that, you know, runs out of a, a very busy IT office and all the wires are bundled together. That's called convergence in the models. And... Just like when you have all your wires bundled, maybe you've got an office with three computers and a whole bunch of printers and other stuff, and you got all those wires, you don't want them loose everywhere because it's just chaos, right? Well, the same thing holds true in the models. When I see this and everything is generally neatly tightened together here, packaged up, that is convergence in the models. They are tightly clustered. This one is the climatology and persistence model. Forget it. It has nothing to do with anything, in my opinion. It's an outlier. Ignore it. Everything else is tightly clustered, and that shows me that there is confidence in two things, the forecast as a whole and the very important dip that we see here is evidence in all of the models, that dip right there. Uh, they all show that. So confidence, people. 
We have to have confidence in the global guidance, the hurricane model guidance, and then that helps the National Hurricane Center forecasters develop the human element that goes into their forecast. The intensity forecast also, generally speaking, tightly clustered. A couple of the models do take it to Cat 4, including the intensity consensus, which is this black line right here. And like I said, do not be surprised if this reaches 160, 165 miles per hour at some point between now and the next five days. I want to show you real quick, since Harvey is still impacting areas, National Weather Service homepage map, you can see that the Mississippi Valley, uh, and then extending up into parts of western Tennessee and even into Kentucky here, flash flood watches, and there are flash flood watches for Alabama. Uh, I want to show you the radar to give you a perspective of where everything is. Right now I am in Louisiana on my way back home to North Carolina. We'll be stopping in Atlanta tonight and then on my way back to the Tar Heel State tomorrow. So if you scroll over, you can really see the still widespread nature here. Heavy rainfall associated with the direct circulation, what's left of it of Harvey, and then very heavy rains now still streaming in across the Florida Panhandle and uh, up into uh, Alabama, east of Montgomery, and then even up north of Atlanta and streaming north from there. And this is going to continue, so be mindful of that, if, of that if you are out and about, which I will be. Uh, I'll be heading across uh, I-10 here and making my way, whoops, not that way, something like this into Atlanta, and then finally on back home into North Carolina tomorrow. And then i got to start watching Irma. All right, so wanted to mention this. I'm going to start doing this more because people said I don't do it enough, and I guess they're right. I've been too humble about it. If you want to support what we're doing, uh, we can't do this without you. We are not well-funded with a million-dollar endowment somewhere. I wish we were. Um, but just want to mention that I'm not going to lecture too much. We do have the Patreon, so if you want to become a sustaining member for as long as you can, uh, you can do that. That's a new thing here, this crowdfunding uh, Patreon. You become a patron of something, and you can support music, art, you know, developers, whatever. And we're on there, so check that out. And then, of course, everybody knows about PayPal. And you can send any funds at any time to fund at hurricanetrack.com. This is not about making me a wealthy man. It is about being able to afford to do what we need to do and pay the people that help me, pay for the servers, pay for the gas. And you know what? If I get to pay some bills at the end of it, that's not such a bad thing. And I have definitely neglected that in terms of mentioning, hey, we need funding too. And I'm going to start talking about it more because this is important. And I really appreciate it. These are strangers that have reached out to me and said, you've got to talk about funding or you're not going to be able to do this much longer. And they're right because it is getting expensive quick, especially when you're gone for a week. All right, so thanks to everybody that did reach out to you. know who you are, and I really appreciate it. It has absolutely made a difference, but we got to keep going. Okie dokes. All right, well, I am, like I said, in uh, Louisiana heading home. I will be producing these videos every day. And uh, when I get back into the office, we'll continue that uh, starting this weekend. Um, I'll be back tomorrow night, of course, in uh, Wilmington. But uh, we got a lot to keep up here with, up with here with Irma, and this is going to be an important one, I do believe. Have a great rest of your Thursday. Thanks, as always, for tuning in, and thank you for being a part of the Harvey mission. It was grueling, but well worth it. Very rewarding on a lot of levels. We will talk about all of the accomplishments from that on another day. Uh, Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com in Louisiana on the way home to North Carolina. I'll have another video discussion for you tomorrow.